entitled passenger tried to fight for my berth in bus, which I reserved two days prior to boarding the bus. Let's keep it short. Most of my old posts will show how old I am currently. I am a somaphore of a normal college who just got a week for upcoming semester exams. My father booked me a upper head berth in a government bus so I can sleep peacefully and arrive after a six hour ride home. The bus departure was at 9 p.m. a while. I sat inside the bus by 8.40 p.m. already. The bus drive was peaceful as I handed the ticket to the conductor and everything went peaceful as I wore my noise canceller headphones, slept for one hour. At exactly 10.10, I was woken up by a fellow passenger while the bus was in motion that he was very tired and wants to take a nap in my berth. However, I declined the offer that I was not going to offer it. And he did not like that. For the next 10 seconds, he blabbered curses against me of my parents for not giving the birth for him. I forgot to mention, he is traveling with his wife and she might have taken the double birth with no kids aside. She joined and tried shame me for this, but it was not long ago. The driver after hearing the sound stopped the bus and the conductor came up. He was not willing to take a reason from either of us and ordered only the woman to get of the bed. You may ask why? They paid a regular ticket for 300 rupees, so they can only take up the normal seats in the bottom row, not the beds. The woman tried to make a fuss, however they gave them an either option, either to sit in or leave with their money. I don't think they settled, so they eventually got off to a nearby highway tea stall. Also, I was carrying my college bag and a huge sewer case, so imagine how my sleeping position could have been like. The bus ride was fine as I was able to sleep perfectly for a few hours, and by today morning four, and I reached my hometown. I was traveling in a set bus from Koyamadu, so I eventually went home and slept peacefully. Also, for people who may ask why I did not keep the luggage in the lower base, head up is that the conductor did not allow it EAL because the other people who were on board literally were moving their entire house, I assume, and there was absolutely no space even for the members who filled the luggage zone to keep bags in their seats. And more specifically, the ticket costed around 700 rupees. The next story is, how do you not understand why I stopped talking to you? So basically to understand this story, better I have to go back to the beginning. My family was decently small with me a seven team. My sister, my mom, and my dad, my parents would fight a lot and it has caused me issues that I still have to this day. One bad one was when my mother cheated on my dad with one of his coworkers. And this led to a lot of issues with his mental health. My dad, 34, ex-schnickly stepdad, but he raised me passed away back in 2020, and rightfully so, my family was devastated. Before this happened, my mother had always struggled with drinking, and after this, it got worse. From the time my dad passed, I had to be the one to step up and take care of my sister and myself. I was only 14 at the time, but I had to be the strong one for my mother and sister. As time went on, things only got worse with my mother. Somewhere along the way, she had started to use drugs again. She had struggled in the past with drugs, but picked it up again after my dad's passing. This caused a lot of issues, as you could imagine. I started to be home less and less going to my friend's current BFS while my sister was off the pie. Around this time, she had gotten together with the coworker that she had cheated on my dad with, and he had got her hooked on drugs harder than what she had been on before. Eventually, they would lock themselves in a room together. So I really just stopped coming home. My friend's a current BFS mom was amazing, and let me stay all the time. It got to the point where I just didn't come home at all and my mother didn't care. Everything changed. When I was talking to one of my mother's friends and she told me what drug she was on, at this point I was 15 and just done with all of this. So I told everyone who had wanted to call Child Protective Services to call them. This resulted in my sister being sent to another state and living with our grandparents. And I stayed in my current state. With a long court process, I was able to have my friend's mom take custody of my and be my legal guardian. The only reason I could do this was because I was about to graduate early at 16. On my 16th birthday, after court was settled, my mother came to the house to talk to me and basically yelled at me for causing this mess, which I kinda did, but I did it to protect my sister. And she also blamed me for making my dad's death harder on her. She claimed I wouldn't know what it's like losing someone so close, which wasn't true since I was closer with my dad. After that day, I cut all contact and hadn't said a word to her since. Since then, she has tried to contact me multiple times, as well as tried to contact me through family members, every time claiming she doesn't know why I cut her off. Since then, I've gone to therapy and gotten the help I needed, since she has caused me way more issues than just this. I have tried to contact her in a therapy, setting to which she hasn't responded to, but I am doing better than I have ever been.
There is a lot more to this story than this, but this is getting too long now. The last story is, I put vegetables in all my food so my roommate's kid won't eat them. The mom is upset. I posted this in another forum but received a lot of comments telling me to post it here as well. I2000 Pantry 2 Rash is a rare. Richie Vout Server. In Stand 5 the Rash take Plaming Vage Main Machi Main Winky. I don't doubt Sewer Plea Kexefs. I love real I have the other persons, living persons, IQs, police operations, and for money in the you may reseparationals. All those rousing police sounds, all over weave in Simpsons and in Mother Ring Down. I don't know other persons living with me, but another person living single mother moving. Our work schedules collide, so we really don't interact much. But when we do, it's fine. No issue there. I want to start with saying that she clearly struggles financially, but I don't think it's an excuse. I don't make lots of money either. However, I've noticed that my food would go missing or portions would be taken from it. I assumed it was her kid, so I asked her if she'd stop him from eating my food. I was calm about it, and she just said she would. It didn't really upset me when it first started. It started getting annoying when I'd get home from work and expect to have a meal's worth of leftovers in the fridge, only to see it pick through or just gone. I kept bringing it up, and she started getting annoyed with me bringing it up. Just from observing them, I realized that neither of them ever eat vegetables. And judging by the food that would get picked through and the food that would be untouched, anything with green in was avoided. Orange chicken would be gone, but chicken and broccoli would be untouched. So I started putting vegetables in everything. I find vegetables to be delicious and anything green or not a potato does not get eaten. So I could mix some bell peppers into the food and it would be fine. I make a big portion of vegetables pretty frequently anyway, so I just started putting it in everything I eat. If I had leftover mashed potatoes, I'd pour green beans in and mix it up. If I had leftover cheesy coteries, I'd pour broccoli all over it and mix it in. Usually my homemade stuff has vegetables in it, but I started making sure everything did. I made a pot of mac and cheese, the kids' favorite thing, and poured in roasted Brussels sprouts, which is actually delicious to me, and I'm eating more vegetables, so it's a win-win. She'd been seeming annoyed, but we were all home when I made the pot of mac and cheese. She was in the living room and saw me get out the Brussels sprouts and was like, what are you going to do with that? And I poured them in. She said I was being greedy and annoying. I just said I like Brussels sprouts and that was it. She said we need food and I told her to go get some or stop buying only prepackaged things and your money will go further. I think she sees this as some big act of revenge, but I just simply want to be able to eat my food. Also want to add that the sharing is not the issue. It's expecting to have food there and it's not. So often I'd be working a long day and get home expecting to have a meal's worth of food and it all be gone. Or I wake up in a rush and had my food ready to eat in the morning only to find it gone. So now I have to skip breakfast. If she would simply text sometimes, hey, is it okay? If we eat food, I'd, I would know and know to make other plans. I would stop for food or know I have to whip something up when I get home. Also, I think eating the last of someone else's food is crazy and rude. If someone makes a big pot of something and you ask for a serving, but if someone made something and there is one serving left and you eat it without permission, that is evil as he. As we wrap up our video, I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this story. You are the most valuable viewers who inspire us to keep telling exciting and unforgettable stories. Without your support and belief in our work, we could not do it. Please continue to leave your comments, likes, and subscriptions. They are very important to us. And don't forget to share this video with your friends to enjoy new and exciting stories together. Thank you again and see you in our next video. Have a great day.